Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Do you ever get that feeling when you buy something for your computer that the instructions to install it are basically hieroglyphics? The first thing you do is furiously Google easy way to install blah blah blah. Well, I'm here to respond to that Google search query and make your life a little bit easier. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that button right now and turn on that little bell to receive notifications. We upload basically every single day of the week, so make sure you're subscribed. Cooler Master sent us one of their brand new Master Liquid ML360R all-in-one water coolers to check out. So we thought that we'd show you how to install it on an Intel-based system. The CPU we're going to be installing this on is the Intel i7-8700K. However, it applies to all 11.5x desktop Intel boards regardless of generation or manufacturer. Before we begin, I want to clear some stuff up because every single time we do one of these videos, we get the exact same questions. <laughs> Number one, watch the whole video before asking questions because I'll most likely answer whatever question you're going to ask in this video. <laughs> Number two, this cooler will work with AuraSync. You just have to play around with it to get it to work. Number three, every single case is different. So the installation of fans and radiators will probably be different for your application. And yeah, every case is basically different. Go and research your case. Number four, this guide also applies to installing the ML120R and ML240R on an Intel socket as well. And number five, you don't need to fill these coolers up with fluid or change your fluid or anything ever. You don't have to service it. There's nothing you have to do. Just put it in your system and it will be good until it explodes eventually one day, which will probably never happen. With all that said, let's show you how to install it. Like I mentioned in the intro, we're installing this on the Intel i7 8700K. You'll need to locate a few parts like this backing plate. You'll also need these little thumb nuts. Also, you'll want to get these bolts stash standoff screw thingamajigs and these plastic clips and these little spaces they kind of hold everything together now get the bolt and place it through the back side of the backing plate just like this oh yeah in the hole here we go and you'll need to rotate it so it actually lines up and drops into place just like that get the plastic clip and what you want to do is push it down all the way and you'll feel it clip in, rotate it to the other side and pull it back to the second notch. That is for this type of installation. Right, I'm just going to speed this up so you don't have to watch me do it to every single corner because that would be incredibly boring to watch and take a lot of time. Once you're done, it should look something like this. Now you're gonna wanna get those plastic spacer slash retainer thingamajigs because we're gonna need them for this next step. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip the motherboard over to the backside so you can see the backside and place the backing plate through the holes that you can see on the backside of the socket, just like so, and kind of hold it in place as you flip it back over so it doesn't fall out and get four of those little sleeve slash retaining things I don't actually know what they're called whatever you, you know what they do and slide them onto every single corner that is exposed the bolts I feel like I'm doing a little bit of a verge here with this installation guide but yeah you guys know what's happening here and give it a little bit of a jiggle so it doesn't fall off it should be on pretty tight and locate these two brackets. These are for Intel based installations and they'll work on every Intel socket. And you'll need to locate four of these screws on the end of the screwdriver. And you'll notice this little notch here and the brackets actually line up with those notches on the side of the cooler. Now what you wanna do is then get each screw, put it through the hole on the underneath near the cold plate of the block and do them up nice and tight and rinse and repeat that for each corner so it has a bracket on each side of the block that makes sense right yeah i hope i hope you're, you're still following me here right now before we install this make sure you remove this sticker otherwise you'll be in a world of hate when you don't know why your temperatures are getting really hot 
Locate the syringe of the included cooler master master Jill. Sorry that I was holding this upside down. I couldn't tell at the time when I was filming it. And you'll need four of these thumb nuts. These are the ones I showed you a little bit earlier. And what we're going to do is put a P dot sized amount of thermal paste on the IHS of the i7-7995 million, 8700K, and lower the block down onto those standoff slash retention bits for this type of retention system. Come on, you guys are following. You know exactly what's happening. Most of you guys would have done this before. And fasten up each of the corners nice and easy. You can tighten them up as far as they go because you can't over tighten them because they're designed to have the exact right amount of clamping pressure. So yeah, for the next part, we're going to need all three of the included fans and believe it or not, you're going to need 12, you heard right, 12 of these thumb screws. They're really long thumb screws. And what we're going to do is attach the radiator and in this case to the front of the case <laughs> see what I did there and just do up all of the thumb screws just like so and in this type of installation the fans and the bolts go through the case and pull the radiator towards the case to hold everything into place but well, that sounded like it was a bit of a wrap also make sure your case actually supports this size cooler it's very very big and not a lot of cases I mean there are a lot of cases that support it but yeah just double check Right now, what you're going to want to do is get all of the cables from all of the fans that includes PWM and ARGB cables and pass them through to the back of the case. Now, this is going to help you in the later part of this install guide because there are a lot of cables to plug in and a lot of things to do and a lot of things for you to pay attention to because you might mess this up if you don't listen really carefully <laughs> but we're gonna deal with the inside first right now you're gonna want to find this fan speed controller plug that comes off the water block itself and you're going to want to locate an AIO pump or a CPU fan header or any header that you can control in any software or motherboard BIOS or whatever and plug that in just like so. Now this is the ARGB connector. All you need to do is just pass that through to the back of the case and we'll get to that. Now locate this three-way splitter locate the CPU fan header on your motherboard and plug this guy in just like so. Nice and easy, can't really mess this part up, just pay attention. Right now you're gonna wanna get this USB connector and plug it into an available USB header and this is a USB 2.0 header on your motherboard and pass that cable through to the back. I hope you guys are following because I'm not repeating myself. Now this next part is optional, you'll want to get these two cables that look like this. One plugs into the motherboard and one plugs into the controller. And I'm going to show you how this plugs into the control box just like so. Now this cable with the pointy ends plugs into the case reset header on the control box and the other one plugs into the motherboard header. Now this is basically a type of bridging system. Now, all you need to do is plug one end into your reset switch on the motherboard and plug the case reset switch into the one that has the two pins that are hanging out just like so. This is another optional step if you want Aorus in control because this is an ASUS board and all you'll need to do is locate a free RGB header on your motherboard, plug it in like so and pass that cable through to the back and plug it into an available spot on the controller a little bit later. Locate the three PWM connectors from the three front fans for the cooler and get the splitter that we passed through to the back of the case a little bit earlier and plug those guys in nice and snug so they all fit together so they can do all of the spinny things. Yeah, locate the five way ARGB splitter cable. It looks like this one end has five and the other has one and they only have three holes on them and get this little guy here there's a lot of them that come with the kit and plug it in just like so nice and easy and then you can plug that into one of the addressable rgb headers labeled either a1 a2 a3 or a4 not the one on the bottom of the controller and 
then plug in all of the fan side, just like so. Find the USB cable and the USB header plug that we plugged in before, plug it in nice and easy, plug in the other end into the control box, get the SATA power connector, plug that into your control box, and smash it on the case because it's magnetic and we're done and it should look a little something like this. If you have any questions about installing the Master Liquid ML360R, drop a comment down below or come join us on Discord to have a chat. All the products mentioned in this video can be purchased down below. Also, make sure you watch the whole video before asking any questions. It does get very tiring responding to a million comments that are exactly the same all the time. <laughs> Special thanks to Cool Master for sending us this cooler to use. From preliminary testing with the 8700K, it keeps that hot boy nice and cool we do have a build coming with this cooler but yeah we're waiting for a new special case to arrive i can't say anything yet but it's gonna be a doozy if you like this video please like and subscribe if you hated this video and everything about it tell us what you hated about it tell us what i did wrong probably wasn't wrong <laughs> you know how the comments on youtube work <laughs> once again thanks very much for watching i'm nick with gear seekers you peak we see. And how good does that rainbow unicorn spew look? It looks pretty glorious. I know some of you guys out there hate RGB, but how can you hate it when it looks like that? Yeah. <laughs>